and of course other interested stakeholders in Zimbabwe. This is the constitution which we are using. It is a product of every political player, of every major political player who is in the game. Even the interviewing of the personnel of the ZEG was a parliamentary process which included the people and the deputies from the opposition. So we are very conscious as a party that we do not in any way try to impinge on the integrity of institutions which we were party to the protection. We are very careful about that. We respect those institutions. Uh, we see them as important pillars in nation building. They have got a special role to discuss. They also have a political role to discuss for the people, for the people of Zimbabwe. So I want everybody to, to bear in mind that the constitution we are using was a collective effort of MDC who is now moved into the triple C one, uh, of which uh, advocate Nelson Janisa has become the leader of that particular formation. But uh, you know he can't so they can't tell you. You can't go and choose your name, it's other category. It's offered as it is. You can't choose what you want in the constitution. You should participate in it and then reject other say that I want to salute the people of Zimbabwe. Uh, as we await the results, we don't know who the winner is officially. But I can safely say now that there is one winner, and it is the people of Zimbabwe. They are the winners in this process. Uh, for a little over two days, they went about their task of fulfilling their constitutional mandate to choose who they want to be their ruler at local level, at deputy parliamentary level, but also at the most important uh, office in the land, presidential level. This is what the people of Zimbabwe will do. And across the land, indeed, it in the most exemplary of Notwithstanding the challenges which may have arisen from an administrative point of view, they went about their business, they did not fight, they did not try to upgrade the system, and they go in the booth as individuals to make a decision instead of that booth as an individual without anyone breathing down their neck. about Zimbabwe's being programmed in any manner before election vote so that they won't say the vote as a robot. It's not true. We are not we are no species of Zimbabwe, which is a product of chatbot. They are conscious people making their decisions. They do not have software which has been pumped into their heads to make them go and make certain decisions predetermined. No, they left their homes, went to the good, made a decision. And you saw the process step by step. And I think many of you have the opportunity to see the people in their community. <coughs> step by step, the checking, the cross-checking of names. Do you belong to that constituency? Is it your voting booth? Which you are in, your name is there, here is your pen, and the ink is then marked on your finger, and then the ink to make sure that you prove that you have voted and you will come back again. And then you are given the freedom to go inside the meeting booth and make your decision. So, uh, people would like to make a lot about the pre environment of elections want to make it as if people of Zimbabwe are software programmed. No, they are not software programmed. They make conscious decisions. 
and the only efforts they have tried to make an issue of the state of war. Of course, the constitution of the country does not oblige. But anyway, people went to court about the matter. In a Republican constitution, there are three arms of power the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. They question each other. The laws we are applying have been made by the Parliament of Zimbabwe is indicated here in the area of the 20 The application of the law is made by the executive means of the government. In the event that there is disputation or infringement, as any Zimbabwean who is a constitutional entity is free to go to the courts, which was duly done by a number of individuals. And the effect of it, of course, was that we went headlong into the elections with a lot of litigation. This was an attempt to make sure that the system is seen to be transparent. So as a group of that, we have no issue about people going to the courts to go and make find a determination about any infringement. We actually applaud the courts, including a new novel entity called the Electoral Court, which is meant to make decisions as quickly as soon as possible so that it does not upend the democratic process of voting as proclaimed by the President of the for a particular day. So in any event, we need to congratulate Zach, but notwithstanding all those litigations, they still managed to get a voting from the 23rd of August, like by and large. Because of the litigation, and because in the first time that we are using the electoral courts, it really made ZEC work over time. And the mistakes were made, definitely, there were also time delays, there were also logistical issues. And we are very happy that the precedents, the supremacy of the people exercising their vote was the guiding principle in general and an extension was given to those polling votes where voting had not yet started because the voting material was made. It is in the same spirit that said they be much to the chagrin of the ruling party allowed certain members of the opposition who had days to register as candidates, but only left it in the last minute to register as candidates. They turned it. They went there without their money, without their documentation complete. And Zek made a decision that they voting their registration be extended until we when the closure was at 4 o'clock on the 20th, the 21st, on the 21st. So here is a bias by Zek towards giving every Zimbabwe an opportunity to go and vote. Yes, there was a decision by the courts, the high court, on certain candidates, who the, which was then overturned. That the constitutional court felt that the vote is very important. We must give the people a chance to vote rather than to say administrative issues over the people from voting. I want to remind the foreigners who are here, the foreign correspondents, we are the first national liberation movement in modern times to fight an armed struggle to the point of victory. Enforce an armistice on secular minority racist aggressors and will invite the end of their imperial sponsor, England, to host an armistice called the Landers House Agreement in 1979. Out of that, a near victory, a near victory army decided to lay the arms down. 
assembling dangerous assembling points and gathering points and give the people of Zimbabwe the free reign to choose who to be their president. By the way, there was no voters in all the states of There wasn't. In the event we assumed office by the ballot box in 1980, not by the government. Many other countries I won't mention them, the National Liberation Mountains, to be the bond themselves by the most one military victory, they are the government. We actually kept a template for the United Nations and the diplomat. I've said in several countries that was law. We became a template of how to resolve issues after and the confrontation in the nation. So I want to emphasize that our democratic credentials, one, they were hard end by our sacrifice. Two, we actually exercised that democratic right to assume office. I want to dispense the sanctimonious notions of subsisting Western countries, particularly those with an imperial record which never have given Africa democracy. To try to say they can now become prosthetic. Friends, and 
or see or clothing in a costume itself with the triple C. You don't think that's what Zambia stands about? He even goes further to try to make an issue about civic organizations and chooses some against the other in Zimbabwe. He favors Zesim and others. Then he cast against Fars on the other hand. This is a bias. I want to know America had a civil war in 1861, starting in 1861. Because of the duty to protect the unit of America, certain of its citizens decided to form the American National Rifle Association. It's a historical product of the American evolution in its history. As in every modern state. Today, the NRA is one of the most active of American civic bodies. To the extent that it now decides to lobby for certain politicians with a bias toward the Republicans. Not only that, you hear of periodic massacres of school children, of people shopping centers. Because America says we have the right to have a gun. We went through a civil war. We went through a liberation movement. One time the gun was my friend. It's the only other thing that we wore for besides when we fly. My enemy. But we dropped the after independence. So we know guns in We told the hero we don't have a, a, a gun culture. But the Americans have maintained a gun culture which is now causing so many massacres in their country. But nobody wants to speak about that from other countries. Now you want to make an issue about our historical circumstances. Our people are natural vigilant because they fought a war and they will continue to be vigilant and they have institutions which are a continuation from that war like us of our people like civic committees which are looking at security and intelligence to say, are we safe? I always emphasize the point. If in Zimbabwe you go to a rural area or certain places and you cannot be identified as to who you want to marry or not get to marry to, within three to four hours, you see a whole intelligence organization that you know. Where does that come from? It comes from war. You hate to know who is who. Know your friend, know your enemy. If you don't, you die. That's what, because there was all sorts of nefarious institutions of, of terror, of murder, of disappearances, disabled scouts, the special air services of Zimbabwe. All these institutions, the Pumarevan, these are historical institutions which made it life difficult in rural areas, so vigilance is natural in Zimbabwe people. So to make an issue about FAS and other historical institutions about Zimbabwe is to question the origin of the state. And for Mr. Nebus, I want to remind him that our original training about Zimbabwe defense forces came from Zambia. We were hosted in Zambia. We were hosted in Tanzania. And he, because he's from a later day part, he can go to the archives of his country and really understand the role of Zambia in the best of what now is about the defense forces. I want to politely remind him to go and read the history of this country before he starts castigating Zimbabwean entities. It's not right. Every country is with its own history. That's why I made an allusion to America and its National Rifle Association. And by the way, the Americans have actually copied it from England, which is also a national rifle association. So the idea of vigilance in communities is not new. And the idea that an association can lobby for its interests, just like the National Rifle Association does in America, it's not new. It is the same as this in trying to lobby for the interests of the opposition. But there is a controversy <coughs> behind the, the, the line in the sand. You don't allocate yourself the role of a statutory body which has got the sole responsibility of collecting and announcing elections. It's not your duty. 
uh, let that board which does the job be given the full mandate to try to have a parallel system so that you need to get prejudice and to take the challenge the integrity of all institutions before they completed their job. No, no, no. That won't be accepted. We know the pain of giving birth to this Western state. We know the threats which threat which, which, which face this public state. We make a distinction. There is this public state, we take it as it is. There is political contestation by political parties. That is allowed. You can contest for political party. But the moment you try then to challenge the legitimacy of this public state, you are and to challenge it on behalf of posting PR issues <coughs> in Europe and in America incenses us more so some of us who go Because the battle of the Islamic State was a painful process. Out of every five people I met, we only took it to get the king alive. And most of them have made it into tools of that war and blinded and unable to cope with life afterwards. The Islamic State is sacrosanct. We will go to any length to defend you. And we to do no interference and we fear no power to defend this one state. We have no issue about people contesting this political party because it's a constitutional provision brought by the same army and defended by the same state. It is the same state which defends that aspect. Yeah, they all speak peacefully to even the opposition today, just like the ruling party. All of them. What makes you feel that you can come to San Diego and go that screen and sit like you do and take your pictures? It's because you know there's no order in the land. Who is administering that law in court? This is about the state. Please give it respect. Yeah. Give it respect. This is about the state. So I want to emphasize the point that uh, we are dismissive of the ramblings and mouthings of neighbors who, who abuses this judicial law as the head of his government, of the observer mission, and arrogates to himself a dictatorial mandate as a solo individual to say I'm here to promote the interests of a fellow preacher. He's a preacher. He probably used to come and compare the Bible notes in the Chinese lady. He's a preacher. <laughs> so their camaraderie in the gospel of Christ has nothing to do with his law as an observer of Islam elections. We await the outcome of the elections. I do not try to say who is winning, who is not winning, because it's not our role as a party to do that. It is the role of saying we leave it to say. We remain confident. The same confidence which made us campaign so hard. The same confidence which made us, our president scour the land, holding rallies, meeting churches, meeting businessmen. Is that I will get the vote to make me the president of the We are very confident that we will score a majority which will make me the president of the And with luck, we may get even two thirds, way beyond what is needed to rule the country. We may get two thirds majority. The only thing we have, of course, with the single majority, which gives us power. But you know, if, if the people of Zimbabwe, we are willing, we get to the to celebrate. We have no problem with the performance of the opposition. It is the appeal of the Zimbabwean electorate. That's why I say that the winner in this election is the Zimbabwean people. They have shown the whole world that they can exercise democracy in their own way, in a peaceful manner. Have the patience, fortitude to stand for hours, even extending into the night, 
because they value the insertion of their eggs on a piece of paper. Clearly, that person is not pre-software, pre-loaded software driven. No. He's making soldiers' decisions. And that's what the people of Zimbabwe do. They make conscious decisions to guide and which numbers to come from. They also make conscious decisions to go into their legs on the body they put so much for. That's what I wanted to say by and large. On a separate note, we have our Vice President of South Africa, who is part of the BRICS Plus Summit. We are very happy of the progress which the BRICS has made as a, a, a putative global institution which is meant to address the historical neglect and marginalization of the global South. The behavior which we have made, we are making issues about today, about people who want to pop their fingers in the government institutions and their demand originates precisely from those powers which gave themselves a first imperial power catches of an early access to the prowess of the industrial revolution. Europe stripped their head of Africa and other continents. Then industrial production made them powerful and they then had a run before everybody else did, even though the government was invaded by the Chinese. And they formed a cartel at the Berlin Conference to deny other nations in Ghana so that it becomes an instrument of control of dictatorship to other countries. Of course, in 1971, European power Russia broke out of that cartel and decided to make Uganda a democratic weapon for everyone. It was the democratization of Uganda, which eventually made it possible for us even to defy. England and its process and become free. But there are vestiges of that era which includes the abuse of the currency of one particular country, which since Zimbabwe will suffer inflation, which is way beyond physical possibilities. To have any hyperinflation, which is the velocity of money several times faster than the speed of light. It's an impossibility. It's a physical impossibility. But Zimbabwe went through that terrible. So the BRICS countries are now addressing the weaponization of currency against other countries, and we have been a victim. So we hail the decisions and the progress which the BRICS countries made in South Africa, especially on the African continent. And we are particularly delighted that the major oil powers are all now in one plan, because the basis of the American dollar is a world currency. It's not the American military. No, no, no. The basis of the supremacy of the American dollar was American economic progress translated into the ubiquity of one particular commodity, petrol, for mobility. And they made an agreement with Saudi Arabia that anyone who buys fuel has paid it based on this. Saudi Arabia agreed in 1971. That's why the US dollar is what it is today. It buys every commodity, the most important commodity of trade. But there are now challenges in that. And Saudi Arabia is now a competitor because America is now in its coordinated export of fuel. So they are competing on the market. Maybe Saudi Arabia doesn't want any more US dollars because it is competing with the American countries for the market. So to have Saudi Arabia, Iran, UAE, Jordan, Russia, and together they account for 70 to 80 percent of the production of petroleum. And if they can decide that we use local currencies or our own national currencies, it's good. After all, we in Zimbabwe have made more progress already by using gold as a way to get out of the inflation which was affecting us because of their weaponization of the US dollar. So we are on that road already. We say to the others, in the BRICS countries as they seek for a new way out of the weaponization of the US. So welcome on board. We have been for 22 years trying to start out of that political So more are joining us. Isn't it a good thing that we are sharing places? 
I told you about what we did from various offices and operating offices. We were trailblazers. Here we are there. We are trailblazing in a major geopolitical financial paradigm, which is a resistance to the weaponization of the dollar. The main thing is it is static. You may fulminate as to why, you may argue as to why it's not going to be easy, but you can't argue from the rationale to the right of the And once there is a rationale, there will always be a will. And when there is a will, there is a way. More so, when the biggest buyers of oil now are Russia, China, with the second largest economy in the world, and India, These are the economic powers, major ones, and they are all in the cloud. It's a good thing. Maybe America may also now begin to know that it should cut its growth up on its side. Because you can't sustain that kind of military growth by printing money and then loading the burden of inflation to the world. It costs four times what the government in America pays for. Because eight times for Africa to grow money than Europe pays for. Can you imagine the burden of development which we face because of the abuse of the Western currencies? So here to the Greeks, and I'm very glad that I see one formally acknowledge that it is applied for members. We were searching for this global institution which would serve our interests as a country. Because we struggle as a land of the country under all the circumstances to defend our integrity, our independence. Now it's a way the more the men we are helping that. So, so there is a warning and a caution to those who when they come for election to observe us in Zimbabwe, they want to act as surrogates of outside forces. That's why the police moved against some of those organizations. We are happy that they were nipped in the bud because they were trying to abuse social media to create contestation based on falsehood about who is one and who is one. When the referee is one, we don't have 10 referees in a match. We have only one referee in a match. You can have 10 whistles, two, four or five whistles referee in a match. You can't have that.
Well, this organization has been carrying out surveillance work and intimidating and coaxing voters to vote for Zanopia, not necessarily operating like a civil society organization that's lobbying, but rather it is intimidating people and telling people that when you get into the booth, we will not do surveillance who you voted for. I am able to address those allegations. First, it's a registered organization. And I am not chairman of funds. But I'm sure the libraries will be able to do it. I emphasize, unfortunately, the vigilance is not the main thing. We organize our population. Make it don't what it is. Don't for any outside powers to think that they can come and disorganize the people's power and conquer them. Because what was the pain of Africa when we conquered, when we were enslaved, when we were colonized, it was disorganized. And a national liberation movement, the most important task, I spent my intervention lesson to organize The most daunting task was to organize people, to offset the asymmetrical warfare advantage of the Rhodesian army with the organization of the people. They became polarities with blind eyes and deaf ears. We became devils if I can use by the population. With open eyes and wide with open eyes and wide open ears. We have information. Information is power. We will never, as a country, relinquish our role of trying to get information and intelligence for the protection of this public state. That's why I gave you the experience of the American International Rifle Association. That's why I gave you the intelligence. We have no apologies to make the institutions which are of their origin in our hard fight for independence. We have no we have no apologies. Your second question about fuzz intimidating. I repeat, people go in a group as individuals. They are not shepherded by the individual. They make decisions as individuals. This Babylon water is not programmed by software from fuzz. It is not and the performance of the of the part of, of the other opposition parties, but we are the main opposition parties, is testament to the fact that people of Zimbabwe on a free will basis. Look at their votes. Look at their votes. So why would you want to look to disrespect Zimbabwe? Why would you why would you pass? want to actually impeach on the integrity of Zimbabwe because when they know that he has a way of voting, he is alone in the group that make the decision. If anything, what you have alluded to, precisely will be a losing government on the part of the so decision to vote is made by the individual instead of the It will be folly for us to do that because it will make the rules support us. So, I want to, to, to say it is the same effort <coughs> to lobby or to predetermine what is government to do by social media lies which come from the other organizations attempting a challenge. Some of them are nefarious, all of them are nefarious, but still they don't in any way make this government water fail to make it an informed decision once she or he is inside. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Adio. Uh, I'm uh, Of course, I have to pass. But uh, I think I'm more interested in uh, the differences between what FAS was doing and what the and PRC were, were, were doing. You realize that the FAS was also collecting uh, results. FAS was also reporting, whatever they were reporting, 
a digital station to collect station. But we are also doing something. So generally, what is the difference between to my knowledge? If I can say last elements in the first, we do not have the statutory board, which is there to enforce the integrity of the election from the other side, which is part of the public policy, which intervenes where there may be zealousness and such a terrible match off and they comply. It's different to having a collection of gadgets in safe houses where you want to give your own version of the results of an election. Yeah, everyone knows what is happening now. You, know, you have uh, algorithms standing in for people. Everyone, which time you try to check on your software email, you are asking, are you a robot? You are not. So the danger really comes from those with gadgets. Gadgets more than from anybody else because they miss the home from social media. And we have an angle of people connected to other countries. Not the same quarter in the safe houses and hotels. And advocating themselves the role that we are there to make sure that we supervise. It's like, who gave you that role to supervise? Who gave you that role in a certain country? We have a parallel system of tabulation other than the one which is being made by the proper And who gave you the, 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 the mandate to try to announce the results are yet of what which is constitutionally delegated to do that? You can't go into any country and just make yourself a lot simply because I come from America, I come from Britain, I come from Who are they, those countries? We know them in this issue. We lost a lot of people to Africa. Cases of those countries. We have memories of what those countries have to have. They have no right to come and try to make Africans behave in a manner which we want. We refuse that. And that is the issue at stake. Those are not even local institutions. They are institutions and people which are sponsored from outside the, 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 the domain of Saturn.
and do not have in the, 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 the periodic elections which we are having, which are so transparent as to have all of you here, and to see people voting, and to see an opposition fight perform to the best of its capabilities, and for us to be happy with the performance of that opposition party, even if it is against us, because it is an expression of the will of the people of Zimbabwe. This is Zimbabwe. As to those who announced, I hope they can call me the, the feed on what the section should know, should be on the report of the I would hope that they will be ready to answer that section. Because it's an infringement. If it is, let's say, or let the electoral court, we have many, many people vote the courts on issues up, up to now. So the courts are there. I can't defend the, 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 the them non -possible. If they are infringing the law, they must take, take them out. To be, and if the judge so pronounces, so be it. There is no good to be above the law. That's all. Thank you. 
of the Zimbabwe people, the way to them, speaks volumes of the respect which they have for their electoral machine. If they didn't believe in it, you would not have had now 70% out of the, the electorate, 80% of the electorate voting. In America, 35 is 40% of the electorate of the electorate. The others don't care. This is 70%. Can you not give kudos to the people of Zimbabwe and the confidence they have in their electoral machinery apparatus? apparatus. That they have the fortitude to respect it. But all your claiming is true. They have not even bothered to vote the vote to vote because they know that it was a good decision. I mean, please give the people of Zimbabwe their dream. They are very educated. They have a history of supreme sacrifice to get where they are today. They have withstood 20 years of wasted onslaught and sanctions and they stood to their country despite the pain. They are men of state staff. Give them their joy.